guys don't even understand. I've been waiting all night for my chance to come on stage and sing for y'all. And now I'm here, and I realize there's a whole lot of you, and I just got really nervous. Somebody tell me it's going to be okay. Have you had a good time at Winter Jam so far? Now, I, I just got a feeling, so I got to ask the question. Make some noise. If you've never seen me live before, make some noise. Well, in that case, it's nice to meet you. I'm going to dedicate this song to all my new friends here in California. Because standing here right now, it feels like my own little world is getting a whole
Somebody say, oh. oh. But I think I can speak for all of the artists who've been on stage and saying, we clearly chose the best for last. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Yeah. About a year and a half ago, I had this idea. It seemed like a simple idea at the time. I'm a songwriter, I'm a storyteller at heart. But up until now in my life, I thought I'd tell my story through my songs. Songs like The Motions. That's the story of a burned out preacher's kid who was tired of living a lukewarm life and decided I was going to give God everything, you know? But God started answering that prayer when I said, God, I don't want to go through the motions anymore. And so he put this idea on my heart to make a CD called The Story of Your Life. Thank you. Three of you have heard of that. Fantastic. All the rest of you just felt sorry for me. I'm on you. I asked people to send me their stories, and they did. I thought I might receive a couple hundred. I received 10,000. Yeah, you can cheer for that. I'm the one who had to read them. My own little world was absolutely rocked by 10,000 stories that I read during a two-month stay in a cabin. And tonight, I want to share with you one of my favorite stories from that experience. Is that okay with you? This story came from a woman named Rebecca in Florida. And she chose to write to me about what it was like for her growing up in a dysfunctional family. I'm just curious. Anybody got some dysfunctional family up in here tonight? People. You didn't just raise your hand. You're like, yeah! Woohoo! I messed up! Call Jerry Springer, send it to Ontario! You're my people, because I got some dysfunctional family too. But tonight I have a feeling this story is going to impact your life. This came from Rebecca, and this is what she said. As a child, my home was filled with homosexuality, mental illness, anger, and violence. The legacy my parents were leaving me was sure to lead to a life filled with emotional turmoil. One of the most poignant moments in my life came when I was an adult. My father was dying from AIDS. I was standing in his home talking with his partner. Meanwhile, I could hear my mother and father arguing in the next room. They were shouting at each other, talking about emotional battles and suicide attempts. I had a sick feeling in my stomach as I listened to a conversation that embodied the very sad reality of all I had known as a child. My father's partner responded to what we were hearing by saying to me, well, I guess that's your legacy. I responded with a resigned, yeah, I guess so. But at that very same moment I uttered those words, God spoke to my heart with a depth and a clarity when he said to me, no, that is not your legacy. You have my legacy because you are my child. Tonight, I want you to know that just like Rebecca, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what kind of dysfunction you know. With God's help, you can be the one to stand up, to break the chains, and bring new life to your family tree. Listen to these words tonight. You didn't ask for this. Nobody ever would. Caught in the middle of this dysfunction. It's your sad reality, it's your messed up family tree, and now you're left with all these questions, are you gonna be like your father was, and his father was, do you have to carry what they handed down, no, this is not your legacy.
Oh, my God. 